and welcome to this very, very, very special episode of Rushed Vibes. We'll call it Extended Family Vibes. I am Jessica Rush Vibes Rushing with my co-host, David Rush Vibes Rushing, and another honorable and amazing woman, Miss Stephanie Walthor. I'm a rushing too, though. Can, oh, can I get some rush vibes? My bad. I just go by what's on too? Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, go with that. But, okay, but formerly rushed. known as... I have Russian in my blood. Rush, yes. So <laughs> this is David's cousin. But to me, she's on this pedestal. Where she's she's going to hate being on this pedestal. But she is on this pedestal of just everything. Mm-hmm. She's an amazing woman. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And somehow related to this guy. <laughs> I thought I loved him until five minutes ago. Yeah, I know. I tend to take... Um, I I've, take been, I've been catching strays from family members and extended family members all day. Sarah came after me. She did? On Facebook. Yeah, you didn't see it? No. Because there was a memory, I guess, oh, for you about and... organizing the pantry. Organizing the pantry. And I guess she said... I guess in the thread you had told me to reorganize my face or something like that. And she brought it back up to surface so people bringing up old stuff yeah it's not cool but anyway we have stephanie and stephanie's one of my favorites of i have to i have to qualify and say one of my because y'all get real jealous real quick <laughs> so be like what about me i thought i was your favorite mm-hmm. so she's one of my favorite acquired mm-hmm. cousins um and i want to say it was the last family reunion before covid just canceled life mm-hmm. that i realized that you were a sex therapist Mm -hmm. and it blew my mind like i can still remember the moment Mm -hmm. figuring it out and i was like i already liked you but now i really really like you and then i was like well well, wait i'm married to her little cousin so i like i can't act on it like i can't do anything because that'd be weird so i can't be like so let's have a session so let me tell you about your cousin Nope. <laughs> I will give you a referral. <laughs> but thank, thank let me let me stop talking. I'm going to give you a chance because you've obviously known her slightly longer than I have. I mean, yeah, slightly. I mean, I've known. Uh, uh, well, it's we were kind of talking about it uh, today because um, Steph was at, in college mm-hmm. finishing up her senior year when I was a freshman. So I went to Greensboro College. Steph went to A&T. And um, I don't even remember. Apparently, like she took, she, care of she took care of me for a little bit or at least offered. I don't even mm-hmm. remember. So it's just one, it was a long time ago, but I feel like with her and even Sabrina to a point, her sister, it, we're always kind of like seeing each other, but not really like hanging out with each mm-hmm. other, like at family events and things like that. So sorry that I don't remember. I mean, I appreciate no. if you bought me groceries, I appreciate it because I'm sure I <laughs> ate them, but mm-hmm. no, I don't remember. But, um, not nah, Steph's always been around when I would see at the family reunions, um, you know, a couple of occasions I would come up to the city when we were living down and where I was living down in uh, Monroe in Union County, where we have family road, rushing road for anybody who's unfamiliar or familiar, um, would see her there and stuff's always been cool. But, um, until, you, I, until I beat you in spades. Well, you, I don't even remember. I, don't, I think I probably just got up from the table <laughs> and just <laughs> tucked my tail in and then just left. Cause, cause clearly mm-hmm. I, I was, at the, I was at the professional table. Mm. And um, I, I had no business being there, but no, I, you caliber. you two probably know each other a lot better than than yeah, I know stuff. Yeah, we feel like we're always in each other's inbox mm-hmm. for something. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but I I mean I I'm low key just a fan girl. Oh my god! I mean it's, it's interesting being a fan girl and being family at the same time. Yeah, no. But like I just appreciate I appreciate just women of great caliber. But I appreciate you because of your industry because you are kind of an exception like there there of course you know for those of you who don't know we're just going to just dump in it um her shirt gives it away she is a sex therapist mm-hmm. um but subtracting the sex part from it like i separate in two you're a therapist mm-hmm. you are a black woman therapist mm-hmm. in america mm-hmm. and you know mental health kind of just became trendy especially in the black community so i was impressed with you for that just mm-hmm. you know thinking you said i'm gonna go get an education and, and under, recognize at a young age the importance of mental health. Mm-hmm. So that's something that interested me from the jump. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, sex? I like sex. Mm-hmm. I mean, clearly I've had sex a few times. <laughs> um, and that's like something that I Allegedly. don't know that... Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Boy. <laughs> Allegedly. And that's, I don't know that that's something that people recognize that 
hey, there there are professionals who have intellect about sex Mm -hmm. in a therapeutic way. Yeah. So I was like, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was at that moment that I was like, you are you are a fangirl. Oh my god, I am. I am. Over here glowing. Can I jump in here? Can, can, yes, can please, I, I can just talk about yeah. you this whole can episode. Please, 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 please stop this. Sorry. First and foremost, um, thank y'all for letting me come. Um, love what I do. I love being here. Um, I love my voice um, in this space. Um, but I love the place that you guys are at to just bring just normalcy to life. And so I appreciate you guys for that and even inviting me in. Um, and I cannot even give myself that much credit that I had this epiphany in my life that I'm going to go and do this. Hell nah. Like at the end of the day, and I mean, there's so many conversations we can have, but in our community, I'm not sure about you guys and what your college experience was like um, or deciding what you were going to major in. Um, I didn't know what I was going to major in when I went to college. You know, I just went, you know, um, I had some scholarships, pretty good students, um, but my sister was a social worker and so that was Janelle Janelle was a social worker worked at DSS like years ago and so after my freshman year I had to declare something and I was like okay social work and that's how it just kind of fell into my lap but my husband and I we always talk about believing that God orders our steps um, and just things are just already kind of predestined for you. That's just my personal belief. Um, And I think it was my personal, I think that was predestined for me to um, get my bachelor's in social work, you know, and then kind of really start to figure out, Oh, I like working with people. Oh, I want to. So then it came, became that epiphany of mental health and how important that is. Um, And just, um, we need help. You know, I think I I don't know about once again, you guys upbringing and the people that you were around, but I saw a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff growing up, you know, and I saw a lot of things where I didn't even realize it was mental health and that we needed help in those areas. Um, And then when I got into it and started learning back, I'm like, oh, shit, we really need help in those areas. I need to be able to go back to Betis Ford Road and help these kids. Betis Ford. Yeah, come on now, what's Charlotte? (laughs) But I need to be able to go back and help these kids. I need to be able to go back and help these families. And that's what kind of started that growth of, you know, my licensure in mental health and marriage and family therapy. It wasn't until years later that I became a sex therapist. You know, I mean, once again, just that God kind of destines those steps and what you want to do. Um, but I love where I'm at. I love the journey. Um, and that's it. So thank you for even having me here. You are welcome. Um, I just got more excited. Of course you did. You know, it's fra- you know, it's crazy. Jess said, uh, and I think she's right. You know, it's like a, it's like a, almost like a corporate buzzword now. And, and, a, mm-hmm. and in a capital capitalism sense, uh, capitalistic sense, excuse me, is like mental health. You know, it's being tossed around a lot. Um, but what's crazy is, when I was growing up, my mom would actually give us mental health days from school. Wow. It was, I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know that she, it was like a once a month type thing, or I think it was just whenever I would come to her, she was like, mom, I just, I just don't want to go to I school today. I love that woman. I love her. And she would, and <laughs> she, she and, I love her. and this is something crazy about moms that she was able to know the difference between when I just didn't want to go to school because mm-hmm. I didn't do my homework or mm-hmm. I didn't have a project or whatever. Or when I just need, needed a needed legitimate it. break, yeah. and she would be like, "All right, take a mental health day." Yep. And so you know the whole uh, perfect attendance, you know, that went out the window yeah. real early. And I think, um, you know, it's I'm I'm thankful that she taught me that that recognition mm-hmm. when you when you feel like you just need to kind of unplug and, mm-hmm. and kind of decompress because now I mean I know how to do that now as an adult, mm-hmm. and you know that's things that we watch for you know, with, with our girls, especially the oldest. Um, and it just, it just kind of helps put things in perspective. Like, you know, you get career driven, you have people go back to school as adults, you got, you have things that, you know, extracurricular things you do, and you can just have a lot on your shoulders and a lot on your plate at once before you even realize it. Um, and then just having that self-awareness where you're like, okay, I need to take a step back like a day Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, just to kind of keep my sanity. You know, I, I think I think it, it's paid me dividends. So, Mom, I know you're gonna see this. I love her. I shout, pre- out I, shout out to Doris. I appreciate you. I love her. Cool. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about sex. How? <laughs> <laughs> talk about how sex, did we? Babe. 
therapy. So you said you studied <laughs> social work, mm-hmm. marriage and family th- um, mm-hmm. therapy. How did you... Did you just wake up one day? Was it a client? Was it a group of clients? Like, how did you just... It's, it's actually a very funny story. Um, so I was a stay-at-home mom when we had BJ, and we live in D.C. at this time, and um, just wanting to start something new. Um, and I told Jabari, I said, hey, I want to do these passion parties. I've been seeing this online, like little Tupperware uh-huh. parties, right? And I, I wanted to host one. And then I said, hey, no, I think I want to do this they said that you can sell it and you make these money and da, 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 da. And he was like yeah that's cool but no I don't want my <laughs> wife to be the nasty lady and I'm like but it's good money and it's and it's not that and I mean y'all when I tell nasty you lady. I had to kind of beg him for like weeks like babe lady. I just think this is a good idea like let me just try it out it, it won't be and he I mean he was adamant like I don't want my wife to be the nasty lady. Like, I think it's cool. And I don't know what happened when he finally was like, okay, let's try it out. So I started selling um, toys. So I started selling for passion parties. And I had some amazing parties with these women. And it wasn't nasty and raunchy. It was just presenting these toys and, you know, different oils and all kind of stuff. Um, But one thing about this company, at the end of the day, at the end of the party, your host had to let you have a, a room to yourself with one-on-one with the person coming in there to order. So you're not in this big room ordering in front oh, okay. of everybody. You had to have this personal space. You said <laughs> room one-on-one. Yeah, I was, was like, like whoa, wait, yeah, wait whoa, a minute. Whoa, 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 so you were the nasty lady. You know, were you the nasty lady? No. But, and so these ladies would come back there in that room. And that's all I kept saying. They would come to that back room. And the things that they would say, you know, the things that they would talk about, the things that they just kind of poured out. Now, at this point, I'm not a therapist. You know, I'm still just a bachelor's degree, you know, chick. And they were just pouring, you know. And these are married women doctors lawyers first ladies pastors I want to have a better sexual relationship with my partner I want more intimacy with my partner I've never had an orgasm um I'm just I'm tired the kids are in the way I I don't feel these things I didn't know the answers to that you know but finally that's what kind of just started that what is next it, it has to be something beyond just this little room. I want, I'm, I'm, I love to read. I love to kind of educate myself. So what can I do? And that's what kind of birthed the sex therapy thing. And so that's when I went back to school to become a sex therapist. Um, and it's so funny, but once again, ordered steps. those ordered steps. Yep. That's right. So where did you, did you, did you go back to, and to get no. there. So you have different certification programs. So I went oh, okay. through a certification program. So at this point, now at this point, we live in Florida. And gotcha. so I went through a certification program through Florida um, to become licensed down there. So once you're recognized, you're recognized. Yes. And so you have to go and get your, no, yep, you have to go get your license and okay. all this other kind of stuff. So it's not like um, real estate where you have to, you're only, you're only license. licensed nope. in that state. Nope. Carry, nope. Carry, no, 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 okay. it, it is across. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, um, what was that? What was, was I know you you got a lot of um, you had people leaning on you in those in those back rooms. Sounds that <laughs> those back, back room. rooms. <laughs> so I should I shouldn't have phrased it that way. And those rooms are one on one. You uh-huh. know, people were like you know they were kind mm-hmm. of like throwing their their mm-hmm. um, frustrations and and, yeah. and desires on you. Um, at any point while you were going back to school, did did you ever question if that was what you were supposed to be doing, or did you kind of just just no, go full throttle. I didn't question it. It, yeah. it. it just felt so natural. You know, I know it's so cliche that when you find something that you like, you never feel like you work. Like, yeah. I don't feel like I'm working. It, it is just a very natural. I'm yeah. in therapy, you know, all day long, you know, sessions all day long. I don't feel like I'm working. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just a very natural thing. Cool. So is it, so it's, it's always funny to me, like, um, not funny, but so like for, uh, shrinks, right. Um, all day long mm-hmm. they sit and they listen to people's problems and these mm-hmm. people just throw their problems on, throw their problems on them and then they go home. And I always wonder what's it like for oh, someone who has to sit oh. and, and take on other people's oh. problems all day long. Like how do you release? Cause I imagine that that takes a toll, right? So. I- 
as a new therapist, and I'm just going to jump because that just I get chill bumps even listening to that question because yeah. it's so real. Um, as a very new therapist, when I first started out, I was working. Um, this is down there um, in Florida, and I was working with children who had been abused, mm. sexually abused, physically abused. You're talking about four year olds, five year olds. Now at this point, BJ is young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I tell you gut wrenching, I can remember coming home and just sitting on the side of my bed, just and Jabari would be like, "What do you need?" You know, or let me, and I would just want to hold BJ and hug him. And I, I get chill bumps just even thinking about it. Yeah. That was the bringing it home, you know. Um, to me. And I hate to say it like that, but the, it was almost like kind of um, I had to do, you know, I had to just do what I had to do during those times to become licensed. And that was the kind of job I had to take. And somebody needed to do that job. I had amazing supervisors um, that understood that I was very green and very young in the profession and really taught me how not to bring it home, um, really prayed over me. You know, I was in a Christian organization, um, prayed over me, talked about, you know, you can't can't I, I i can't even go down that road mm -hmm. again but um just really helped me understand how to leave it at my front door and yeah. if you are not there to help that young person who would be there yeah. and understanding that the little hour that i did with them that day made their life so much better because i was there and being okay with what i did do i can't solve their problem and that's the problem with social workers all the time like we feel like we can just solve it yeah. i can't solve your problem but i can help you for this hour um and so now that i've become seasoned in my career i i understand that and i know and i truly know and like i told you guys before like i'm confident in my job and i am yeah. confident in my ability and i know when someone leaves my office they are truly leaving even with the hour of peace of meditation mm -hmm. with some activities they're going to go home and work on feeling a little bit better than they did before they walked in my office so yeah, that's great i didn't even consider how wide ranging a sex therapist oh yeah uh you know you know uh uh services would stretch yeah. like i didn't even it didn't yeah. even cross my mind that you would have to you know counsel you know, people who have been abused. And that's when I wear my shirt, so I wear the shirt in the airport or something, and people are like, ooh, sex therapy, yeah, that's, ooh, it's yada, yada, yada. Jumps to the and front I'm of my like, mind. yeah, I work with rape victims. Um, yeah. yeah, I work with people that's been molested, you know, like, and, and a lot of times, and I, I'm sure this is one of your questions, like, well, what do you do? Who do you see? The biggest thing is, Typically, it's a couple, you know, but inside of that couple, a lot, a big percentage of the people that I see have had some type of molestation or abuse that have happened to them earlier in childhood, and they bring that into their marriage. So now they don't have healthy sexual relationships, mm. you know, or it's over sexual or it's under sexual, yeah. you know, but there's some type of trauma that has happened. And now they're bringing that into their marriage and they can't have this healthy sexual relationship. And so it's kind of wow. uncovering that trauma, processing through that um, and figuring out how do we have a healthy relationship right here between us? Wow. Trauma is trauma is like the root of all trauma is the root of all evil. <laughs> honestly, before this conversation, mm -hmm. like sex therapist, I was mm -hmm. I was over here like you're you're going to be. Like, here's a Kama Sutra book, yeah. and this is what I, you guys need to try. I thought you were going to come in here with, like, a briefcase of toys. Oh, and yeah. Kind of yeah. Like, okay, schedule, so this is like, a... You, yeah. I, I wish, you know, because yeah. that's the fun, and that's the ha-ha-ha. Right. Ha. That's not 90% of my caseload. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. I didn't even... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. Yeah. I feel kind of... And but, I'm kind but, of embarrassed that I didn't it even intertwines. think. intertwines. And so even as you're talking about, well, how do you become a sex therapist? You have to be licensed as a therapist first. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that marriage and family therapy. You have to have that mental health. You have to have that social work licensure, you know. And so that's years and years of education and state boards and all this other kind of stuff before you can even go back to get this certificate. Because you need to know what is therapy before you go and try to tell somebody about sex. That's just a piece of it. Yeah. Wow. There's a reason why we're we're not having healthy sexual relationships and what is it is it stress is it anxiety is it depression is it trauma so what is a healthy sexual relationship is there a definition i don't think there's a definition but i think the definition if i had to do one it is what is healthy within your relationship 
You know, everything yeah. is so individualized. Relative. You yeah. know, what, what, what happens, and I always say, what happens in your bedroom from 9 to 9.30, that's your business, and what does that look like? You know, so that goes when we talk about the LGBTQ community. Are you a good person? Do you have good character? What you do in your bedroom from 9 to 9.30, it ain't got shit to do with me. If you getting thrown up against the hair, boy, hey, go for it. You know, you swinging from that dang home, you know, silly fan. Hey, have fun. But what type of person are you outside of that bedroom? And that's what yeah. we judge LGBTQ all is what they're doing in their bedroom. Mm-hmm. You don't want to know what I'm doing in my bedroom. Trust me. Right. Don't stop yeah. it. It's none of your business. Yeah, we were talking about that kind of uh, as an aside when we... um it was a couple episodes we were talking about that Congress person, that senator who was doing oh, the, who went was on the, the low bathroom and he was like and on the down like, low or something. Uh-huh, like yeah. hand uh-huh. it's just like, like the tap dance. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's gotta be so, I don't even know the word, but it, it's got to be, so, it has to be so uncomfortable to not, to feel like you can't yeah. be who you be are. Be yourself and who you, and what you want to yeah. do and you have to sneak and what's going to happen to my career what's going a lot of times even within our community y'all what's going to happen to my family Mm -hmm. how is my family going to look at me what are they going to say about me we shouldn't have that type of environment yeah i agree you have a question i do go ahead you did the inhale no i've asked like three questions so go ahead so what is a 45 seconds what (laughs) yeah i'm just kidding (laughs) what what's a misconception (laughs) about sex that you have that you find frequently when you are in sessions with people, couples, individuals. How X rated is this show? This is it's adult. It's adult. So you can go you can go there. I don't um, know, but if you get us banned on YouTube. <laughs> well, I'll I'll start here. In working with heterosexual couples, one of the biggest pieces that I find is like the myth of the G spot. You know, Does and it, it not exist? Sorry. There is studies. Let the woman, let the woman speak. There are a lot of studies. There is nothing profound. Everything is studies, mm-hmm. right? Um, but in that, all we can do is look at the research. And in the research, one of the things they tell us is that 87% of women do not have an orgasm off of penetration alone. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is one of the biggest misconceptions. We look at this porn. We look at all this stuff like I'm buzzing a nut from the top ceiling. (laughs) And you don't understand everything that really goes into that. And for women, you know, we need clitoral stimulation. Eighty seven percent of women need clitoral stimulation to have an orgasm. And that is one of the biggest things that I talk through with my with my couples, because I have a guy that's here that's like, well, I've been giving it to every woman before and she never had no problem. Why is the problem with her? And then I have the woman that is like, what is wrong with me? Why can't I do this? What is going on? The biggest one, are you doing or do you have clitoral stimulation? So uh, is busting it up from the ceiling fan is that like a common phrase that people use no okay that's you just, just made that up I, okay I was, I was curious i was i'm good i just want to make sure i'm caught up on my, my okay my you urban want to make dictionary. sure you need to go i just want to make sure i know what the streets we should, we should, we should know. So we need to be trying out, i just want to make know, sure you know, know. I, when i figured out like, i want to hey, know what the streets are saying like i was i was blown away i was like i haven't been in these streets long enough to know no uh-uh no it your ceiling fan is i have adhd so it's like squirrel um yeah so I okay. keep going to the silly fan. I like cool. that. That, that, that would be <laughs> interesting, though. I mean, to pull it off. I, hey, we it. can talk about that later when I'm gone. Okay. okay. You guys can have your own conversation. <laughs> um, we'll probably have time for like, you know, actually, let's go ahead and take a break. Okay. And then we'll, uh, we'll come back with stuff. Cool. 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 Right, can you hold on to your question? Okay. Cause I, I, okay. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. We're back with cousin Steph, sex therapist extraordinaire. Yes. Aww. Jessica, uh, has questions i do have questions Go ahead. um so we just covered you know the misconception but how much of sex is mental as opposed to physical 
99.5%. And that is just, that's me being facetious. Um, But seriously, um, emotional intimacy is so important um, compared to physical intimacy. You have to like your partner. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we often talk about is what was boyfriend and girlfriend like, you know, before you came husband and wife. And I think that should be a goal. My goal is I want to be your girlfriend. I want you to be my boyfriend because that in, you can't wait to get home to them. You can't wait to tell them about your day. Hell, you can't wait to bust it down for them. You know, it's that that is intimacy. That it, where are you going? What you doing? Oh, I got to tell you about my day. Oh, what did you eat today? Oh, I ate that. That's intimacy. And if you're doing that all day, it naturally makes it and, and opens up that door for the physical intimacy at night. Have you seen the couples or talk to the people where they don't like each other, but they have to have sex at night? It's not real good. You yeah. know, I can't, I can't, my libido is low. I can't get hard. I can't get as wet as I want to. I'm not that turned on. Yeah. by you anymore now i just need this physical release and you're just the person here to let me release on but do we like each other anymore mm -hmm. and so that's one of the things of therapy we try to get back to um how do we like each other how do we get that homey time where we just sit on the couch we yeah. kicking it we chilling we just friends we are friends and sometimes in our relationships we lose the friendship we get in these partnerships, we get in these business partnerships with our couples, with our partners. What time the kids got to go to practice? Who has dance? Who has soccer? Baseball? Did you pay the bill? You get your mom and them their flowers for Mother's Day? Okay, now it's time to for sex. Eh. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting because we're kind of in that now. We're in we're in a crazy like trend transition period mm -hmm. because um, I've changed jobs within the last couple of months. So I used to be tied to the desk okay. in my office. Now I'm kind of out and about. Uh, Jessica's hasn't worked, hadn't worked in two years. Now she's working full time. Um, Salas is in first grade and now Sovereign's doing preschool or daycare, excuse me, uh, two days a week. And so it's like, like that first week where everybody has somewhere to go, it was it was crazy. I was so scared that I was gonna forget. No <laughs> like I was just be at school, like just holding <laughs> a book bag, just waiting <laughs> waiting for somebody to come pick her up. It's like, because it's I mean that's just life, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know, kids get older, they get involved with more things. You kind of have to adjust. But it was like all the changes happened at once. So for like the first couple of weeks, it just felt like me and Jess were just passing each other. Like we wake up. I'm I'm up usually she's usually up first getting solids ready. I'd get up second, maybe help with Savi, but I'm in jumping into my office, got meetings, whatever, then I'm out the door. She goes out later. Are you getting solids? Okay, yeah, who's getting Savi? I'm getting Savi. Very Savvy. transactional. Okay. Very transactional. It, it's almost just like like just checking a box. Mm -hmm. Kids need to be picked up. Who's picking the kids up? Okay, we got that covered. Who's getting dinner? Okay. But it's not, it didn't seem, it seemed very like robotic. Yeah. And, and, and nothing is wrong with that the yeah. robotic piece, but the transactional, the business, we have to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. These kids are running up lives, yes. y'all. Like they are yes. running our lives. They are. And we have to take care of it. But in that, how do we still remain intimate? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we still protect our time? Do we have time? I know you are dog tired come seven o'clock, eight o'clock when we're finally putting these kids down. But how do we still say, I have 10 minutes with you. We're going to cuddle. We're going to watch a show. We're going to have a glass of wine together. I'm making you a priority. One of the things we were just talking about, I told you guys, I just did this um, workshop before coming over here, um, scheduling sex scheduling intimacy and it's like stephanie that's not sexy and it's like but is not having sex sexy like what are you doing here right. like you know but even we schedule our nail appointment we schedule the doctor's appointment we we have all these things that are important to us and, 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 and we just walk in oh, yeah. done. but we just we, we schedule it right why can't we schedule intimacy with our partner we're putting on our priorities high on our priority list it's important so let me ask you mm -hmm. can you so you're saying it's possible to schedule intimacy because I've always thought intimacy was something that happens like organically, nope. like naturally. So, so you can actually like. So listen to this idea. Instead of it being we having sex on Wednesdays at the Bible study. OK, <laughs> nothing is sexy about that. Right. <laughs> but what if we say we're having uh, sexy Saturdays? or Freaky Fridays, or Tantalizing Tuesdays. I can start getting a text message early in the day. You know today is Freaky Friday. I can't wait to see you tonight. 
Mm. Or, you know, today is sexy Saturday. Oh, wow. Or I'm going to bring you some roses home from when I get off so this work. instead of saying, mm. okay, let's have sex on Thursday, it's actually like... It's, it's a theme day. It cre- it's cre- it's a theme yeah, you're kind of building and it up. You kn- okay. It's a build up, and I know this is my day. What does it do for the controlling person and the checklist person? Yeah. It makes it on their mind. It's on my checklist for today. What does it do for the person that just want to bust it down? Finally, it's Thursday. I get to I give think me this some. Episode needs to be called "Bust It Down Vibes." <laughs> I'm just saying because she said "bust, <laughs> bust it, it down." So bust, bust it is my fun. That's my word. But but it's important. It, it is definitely definitely important. It's one thing I just really recommend to all of my couples, especially especially the ones with children and very, very busy jobs Mm -hmm. and careers and a lot of stuff going on, put sex on your calendar Mm. and make it sexy when you put it on the calendar. You know, don't just put it on there, put it on there and make it sexy. Cute text messages, roses, lingerie, movie, whatever you have to do, make it cute. So that leads to my question, my Mm -hmm. next question. Uh, How important is sex to a successful marriage, a successful long-term relationship, Mm -hmm. civil, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. How necessary is it? Mm Because, you know, couples go through things. We've had a friend who, or family friend who, you know, she had breast cancer Mm -hmm. and she talked about how, you know, like it was like nine months or Mm -hmm. almost a year, like while chemo and all the treatment Mm -hmm. that she and her husband did not have sex. I mean, it's it's the last thing on, I'm sure it crossed her mind, but like, Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with something right now. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's not a prior. I don't feel mm-hmm. it. So how necessary, important, vital is that physical intimacy to the success of a relationship from your perspective? You ask how important it is in a marriage, in, in, a, in a partnership. The one thing that I would say, if you don't have anything drastic like that going on, the two main reasons for divorce right now is uh, finances and sex. Really? Finances and, and sex. I believe the finances part. Yeah. So finances and sex. Two. I don't know who you're looking all at. These Amazon, you're looking, all, these Amazon yeah. <laughs> all these Amazon boxes. All these Amazon boxes trying to put my house. One for you, Amazon. Yeah. And you one know, because <laughs> my Amazon account and my Target account, I can understand how we but can, you know. I just activated my Target right card. Oh, God. Is that we, why they met? Hey guys, stay focused. Stay focused, cause focused. cause I need to stay focused too. Cause I'm sorry. Amazon gets me every day. These packages stay at the out door. The Facebook groups. Oh. Let's stay focused. But in there, you know, it's important. It it really, really is important. And one thing that I would say, especially as women, after we have children, we're tired and we're taking care of the kids and we got to clean the house and we got to cook and we got to wash the dishes and the clothes. And I don't feel like, what's my word? Busting Busting it it down tonight. Right. I have put sex such at such a low priority. And what does that do in our marriage? And for men, and not to generalize, who have a love language of physical touch, a lot of men have a very high love language of physical touch. If you're not touching me, mm, yes, if you're not touching me, if we're not having sex, I don't feel like you like me. I don't feel like you love me. And so we get into this cycle. So it is important. But the biggest piece is intimacy. Are you looking at me? You're looking at me. Okay. So how do you how do you work around um, love languages? Because I I, I, though you you spoke of it. So I believe that those are a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So. um, So like for us, Mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and use this as an example. I I I assume you don't mind. I mean, you know, any other couples love languages? No, I don't. (laughs) So like I'm very touchy feely, Mm -hmm. like you said. uh, And that's how I express, you know, my my affection for for Jessica. And that's not. Her love, that's not on any of <laughs> it's not on any of the the returns mm-hmm. for for any test she takes potentially. it's not even on the honorable mention list like mm-hmm. it's just not so I'm for acts of service so for for couples this is why we're friends. for couples like that like how do you because i imagine it's like a give and take right mm-hmm. like you have to understand each other's love language mm-hmm. and so it can't be all touchy-feely mm-hmm. but it can't be all acts of service mm-hmm. either so how important is one recognizing each other's love, love language, but then also does it, does it have to be a conversation or is it sort of just something that just happens? Nope. Nothing like just happens. Automatically. No, or you no, kind of just, no, nothing just happens. <laughs> well, I, I don't mean just, it just happens, but like, you know, 
like if you're with someone long enough, you you learn their signals, right? You you know what you know what tips them off. We, we have ADHD. We we not doing that much learning, David. Come on, really <laughs> seriously. Like we're not. And so and you're right. So we have to have those conversations seriously. Yeah. Um, and if anybody that's out here and listening to this, if they want the love language quiz, Google it. It is literally on the internet for free. Yeah. 15, 20 questions, do it with your partner, something fun to do while y'all drive into the grocery store and talk about it because love languages is so important. It is literally the way that I say I love you or I hate you. Mm -hmm. The way that something comes in, it comes in and my brain chops it up. I love you or I hate you when you do this. If I come in the door and I hate shoes at the front door, I want you to really put them in their little pockets where they go and your big ass boats are sitting right there in front. You hate me. Mm -hmm. You care nothing about me because I could have fell over the shoes (laughs) and now I'm your maid and if you really loved me, you would have put the shoes Ah. my the way that my brain chops that up because that's my love language it's like speaking spanish and french you know this is the language that i speak and so when you want to show me that you love me you will do it this way is it going to happen every day no but i i encourage clients to speak your partner's love language at least three times a day do something that says i am showing her right now if i can never say i love you again me doing this is going to show you i love you jabari is a physical touch person so when we're in the kitchen he walks by i smack him on the ass that is like the biggest thing to him like she loves me she (laughs) smacked me on the ass like and it's just this thing of like and i'm not i am I am you like I don't have to be touched at all Mm -hmm. to the point first in marriage I would like he called it a thrust kick I would thrust kicked him like when he would get in the bed and like I would thrust like move it's hot right and and so I had to learn that that's a sign of neglect you know and even though you know and and Jabari's gonna fall asleep quick so I just need to get in the bed and he just need to cuddle for three minutes he's going to be asleep (laughs) and so give him the three minutes because that says I love you it Mm. says I care about you so I sit there and I suffer for the three minutes you know, until he falls and it's nothing sexual. He just wants to cuddle. He yeah. just wants to be close to his wife and to hug. And to this is his way of saying, I love you. And so me learning to speak that language, I'm saying, I love you back to cuddle in those moments. You know, the acts of service, I'm with you coming home and having dinner ready or stopping by Domino's pizza and getting the boys dinner already. So I don't have to do that on a very busy day. You love me. You really love me. It's the, it's so important. So find the quiz, email me, give them my email. I can send you guys the quiz. It is very, very important to know your partner's love language. I saw a meme the other day to say, you're going to go out and buy a Gucci bag when all she wants you to do was vacuum the flow. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. That's That's it. That's crazy. When you put it like that, like that, that's, that's crazy. You, if somebody that's not a gifts person, you could buy them all the gifts in the world. And they're like, I just want you to take the kids to the park and give me a moment to myself. Like, yeah. I want you to buy me a new plant. I wanted to can't like simple things. Very, very simple. So I, this is kind of going back. So, and, and, and focusing on stereotypes. Mm-hmm. So in relationships, and I feel like just the way between pornography and television and entertainment it sex is very male dominated it's male mm-hmm. driven mm-hmm. and you know the woman is just you know the docile mm-hmm. you know i'm i'm here mm-hmm. like have your way how common in your experience have you found that it's not necessarily males who are more sexually driven mm-hmm. but females mm-hmm. and how do they balance that in their relationship because it's almost sometimes it comes off as taboo Mm -hmm. where you know when you have a woman who's too sexual and then Mm -hmm. it's like oh there's something wrong with her it's like Mm -hmm. no like we all have feelings Mm -hmm. and so how have you I don't even know how to formulate my question. Well, it, have I experienced that? Yes, absolutely. It, definitely there are women that have a higher sex drive than their partners, you know, and that is, it's, it is, it is normal. You know, it, it is a very normal thing. Crazy enough, age plays a big part into it, you know, and so you have men who may start having sex earlier in life, you know, so that 15, 16, so they 
excuse my language, they've been fucking since they, you know, was <laughs> in eighth grade, right? Compared to maybe, and we're totally generalizing conversation mm-hmm. right now. The woman who may didn't start until senior year or college or something to that nature, she's a little later. It is something about that 40 ish, 40. 243 um and i think it has something to do with the cortisol in our body when women mm-hmm. start to decrease in cortisol when that stress level really starts to go down mm-hmm. when those kids really start to get older and kind of really taking care of themselves and you're not up fixing lunches and all this other kind of that stress level comes down those hormones go up now the man I, I've been doing this for about 20 years now. I'm kind of tired, you know. Yeah. It's starting to go down a little bit. And and that's what I've seen. And that is generalizing. That's being facetious, you know. But we do hear often that women start to hit a peak a little early, a little, a little later in life. And men start to decrease their peak of how much they desire sex. Not that they don't want it. That is not what I'm saying. But they just don't. They're not, uh, you know, humping like rabbits. You know, like, eh, okay, you know, three, four times a week i'm good you know <laughs> but i don't have to have it four times a day mm-hmm. if that makes sense mm-hmm. is there a statistical healthy amount of sex that's supposed to be had like you were just i know you just made an example and you said, you know, three, well one of the things that we recommend in marriages or in relationships is that there's at least three times a week and i always say for um j- just a quota you know that we should have this quota in our brain that out of seven days out of the week that I am being physically intimate with my partner at least three or so three of those days that's half you know that does not always equal penetration too you know a lot of people get that mixed up like I gotta be bumping this many times no you know they're just what is physical intimacy from 9 to 9 30 between you and your partner what does that look like Mm. Some people really devalue massages and and massages bringing us to orgasms or oral sex and things like that. But when we can kind of take that penetration off the table and just enjoying each other sexually, it can be enjoyable as well, but at least three times a week. Your turn. It was my turn. Um, so you're... And I don't want you to be too specific, obviously, because we want to respect client doctor mm-hmm. um, or patient doctor privilege or whatever. But what what is a if, if there is such a thing? What is a traditional session like? Like if you have a married couple who comes in and maybe there's some some tension where one feels like you know they're not having enough, and maybe one partner mm-hmm. feels you know uh, they, they feel the other partner is a little uh, disconnected or whatever. It's like what what how do you? I don't know if there is such a thing as like a normal session, but like your day to day, what does it look like as a sex therapist? Um, So one in therapy is just psychotherapy. So it's talk therapy. We're just kind of talking through things. We are not in there rubbing, touching and feeling. That is not (laughs) what sex therapy is at all. Um, But really trying to get to the why. What is really going on there? What's really going on in those moments? Um, I do a lot of activities, work um, worksheets, um, questionnaires. Um, if you guys know that, just through research, it tells us when we write, our brains open up a little bit more than talking. You mm-hmm. know, so having them write some stuff out for me. Zoom is kind of hard now mm-hmm. um, because we're all on telehealth. Um, but man, we have made it work. Um, where they have, I can email them things before our sessions mm-hmm. or. I can screen share and they write the questions down right then and there. Um, But I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. It just depends on what it is Um, specifically for low libido. Um, there are um, some specific um, activities that we do to really figure out why, you know, Mm -hmm. one, we rule out medically. Is there something medically going on? You know, have you talked to your OB? Have you talked to your urologist? Um, And then two, okay, so if it is something that is emotional, let's kind of figure that out. And let's try to eliminate some of that stuff. You guys would not realize how much kids play a part in our sexual relationships. I'm scared the kid's going to run in. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, it took me too long to put them to bed. Mm-hmm. Why you didn't come help me? You was down there watching football. I heard you screaming. Yeah. You know, it's like nothing is sexy about this mm-hmm. anymore. Right. And it stems a lot from our children. So how can we get a better routine with our kids at night so that we can have this Freaky Friday? Once again, when you schedule that, we know kids got to be in the bed by 730 at night. You know, mom and daddy got some time tonight. 
just different things like that to make sure that we're putting some parameters and boundaries around it. So, so do you have your own practice? Like, are you, so you're, Mm -hmm. is that, is that normal? Like, or... Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. private practice is normal. Um, I actually practice out of Florida and Georgia. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did mm-hmm. you was was that always the case? Like once you got your license, were you always I was solo? In a group practice okay. in Florida, and then when we moved to Georgia, I kept the Florida practice and then merged it with the Georgia practice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So how um, are you? Is it in terms of sex therapists? Mm-hmm. Are there a lot of black? <laughs> female sex therapist no no so no. you're okay so, so I, and, I figured not yeah no n- no i won't even go into that because i would love to share this on my <laughs> my platforms too so um <laughs> no they but they are not okay. um there and and even to be deemed as a sex therapist you have to go through different licensure boards and all this other kind of stuff you have a lot of coaches mm-hmm. um and things like that but there are not a lot that have went through the full throttle of what it is why do you think that um, is or is or is that part of the no, topic you don't um, want to touch um um expense is it's is expensive mm-hmm. um it takes a lot of time I mean, it's like going to get a degree mm-hmm. you know are you gonna go sit and do this yeah. other degree you know do i really want to go do this do you think part of it is people not understanding the importance of of a sex therapist or how important sex is because you know like like we said, when mm-hmm. when we when I heard you say you're a sex therapist, I think, oh, well, you know, it's like the kinky stuff, yeah. you know, dress mm-hmm. up, cook at the handcuffs mm-hmm. or whatever. But it's it's way more one important mm-hmm. and, and, and way more expansive than that. So do you think it's just a matter of people not really understanding, well, you know, the value? Well, no, because in your when you have become a therapist, yeah. you now know all the different, you know, other places and certificates that Mm -hmm. you get so you have thousands and thousands of therapists who can then go and say hey i want to become a sex therapist and many of them who are interested in do it doing it they just don't okay well damn yeah (laughs) so how, how um talk about then uh how you feel about um being like uh, uh, one of the few, I guess. I love it. Yeah, I, 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 I absolutely love it. Um, because it is a very small niche, you mm-hmm. know. Um, like I told you guys in the beginning, like I'm at the point where I'm not. Ex- I can't accept any new clients. Like it, 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 it's, it's, it's too much. Like. I don't have to market. I don't have to because I am one of the only black sex therapists in the country. You know, there yeah. are not a lot of us, you know, under probably under 100 in the wow. country. In Georgia, I am sure uh, one of five, ten, maybe now at that point, there was a point where it was only like four of us um and so in the in these last couple of years they've been some more that pop through mm-hmm. um when i was in destin i was the only one i mean yeah. it is just so it's an amazing thing but it, it can become overwhelming yeah. um it, it definitely can become overwhelming i can remember um when i was at my practice in florida i was literally in session and someone knocked on my door and was like hey stephanie i have this guy out here who wants to meet you he's gay and i told him you were a gay therapist <laughs> <laughs> so that's not my title like but is that Stephanie, a thing? Gay, gay, <laughs> gay sex therapist. Therapist. or the tr- i work with a lot of trans clients and yeah. you're the trans therapist and it was no i'm a sex therapist but right. you start to box people mm-hmm. in like yeah sure. stephanie's the one to do that send them over there to her yeah. um and that was the thing. And this is a whole nother subject, but finishing up my PhD right now and my dissertation is talking about um, religion. And as therapists, are we discriminating against the LGBTQ community mm-hmm. um, when we say we don't want to work with them because of our religion? Mm-hmm. Is that a, is that a form of discrimination? It's the same way that somebody would have told me back in 1920 that they didn't want to see me because I was black. black. Yeah. yeah. Therapy is therapy. Right. Sure. Um, I feel like you have a question. Like yeah, <laughs> but we're like, I got, I got like we're gonna, we're gonna take we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back with cousin stuff. So stay tuned. All right, we're back with stuff. Okay, so Jessica has questions. I do have questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course. So what? I and unfortunately, fortunately, and unfortunately, we we have the privilege of kind of setting trauma aside. 
um, when some when you get a client, what what are they? Because you're a private practice, so mm-hmm. it's not like they're typically. You know, I I have a therapist. Mine was because of postpartum mm-hmm. issues, so my OB was like, "You need to talk to somebody." Mm-hmm. Here's your here's who we have in office. But when you get a client, what? What is bringing that person to you? Because you're a private practice, so most of the time, these people are coming to you mm-hmm. of their own Will. choice. Mm-hmm. How, what What does that look so like? So much. It's, it's so much. It, I mean, it is just... If I could tell you the amount of phone calls, I just cannot answer a day. Um, because if you if you look at a schedule, you can be in session from 11 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock at night, every hour, 11, 12. And I always say that, like, if you ever call me, call me the last 10 minutes of an hour. So, like, 11, 50, 12, 50, 150, because that last 10 minutes when I'm out. Um, and so, you have phone calls all day long. Um, gamut. I mean, it's just a big gamut of things from marital issues to ADHD to postpartum to I just lost my job to my mama just died from COVID. I mean, everything and people. And like you like we said, kind of in the beginning, mental health is the is the thing. Mm -hmm. So they are constantly calling. Um, One of the biggest things, because I am on insurance panels, so Aetna, you're going to go to Aetna, you're going to go to the site and say, hey, I need a therapist, and they're going to give you a list of people that's in your zip code, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You get pictures, you get their profile, da-da-da. Fortunately, God bless, but sometimes unfortunately, (laughs) in my area, I'm the only black one. I'm one of the only black ones. I'm young, um, and I'm a sex therapist. So it's like, ding, 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 I'm going to call her. And so the phone is constantly ringing. You're like a unicorn. Yeah. So it, it, no. it, and then it's like, and I'm, and, and I feel bad because I'm answering. Sometimes I can answer. Sometimes I can get a call back and it is, well, let me give you a referral. I'm not accepting new clients, but I really wanted you yeah. and you sound so nice. And well, it's because they luck. hadn't played space with you yet. Yeah. They hadn't played space. <laughs> they, it's a whole nother thing. They don't see me it's on the weekends. <laughs> they don't, they don't see me on the weekends. Um, but yeah, so they call with, uh, again, therapy is a very normal thing, Jess. Mm-hmm. It is a very, very normal thing where people are calling and saying, hey, I think I need to talk to someone. Hey, we got into a really bad fight last night. When can you get us in? It's very normal. So for couples, Mm -hmm. if, say, one person, because I know not all couples are open to therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, We've done, I'd say we've done counseling sessions, not necessarily therapy with a therapist. But Mm -hmm. what, how would you... Huh? I said, yeah. I How would you recommend someone? So say you, t- and I feel like, again, I hate blanketing, but I feel like this is typically something that comes from a woman mm-hmm. who's like, I think we need to go mm-hmm. to therapy. Mm-hmm. How, and and usually, again. Did you put lipstick on? I did, but it, it, looks, didn't, it didn't work with my complexion. It looks so good. I had to, thanks. Appreciate you. you look, uh, don't change the subject. You look glossy. Um, glossy. Don't change the subject. Yeah. Okay. I'm glossy. That's not the song. <laughs> I know. I'm, the... I'm, improv- okay. I'm improv. Can I ask this question? Please? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, it's just your beauty. It's just. It's radiating. It's radiating. Yeah, it okay. radiates. And you're pregnant, so you're like double glowing. Yeah. And the hair it shines. Okay. You know, I was singing to you in the kitchen earlier. Oh, girl. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I asked you, you to so, stop. You so fine. You so stop. fine. You're digging into my time. I'm sorry. Go ahead. How, so usually, when it comes to therapy, when it comes to restorative acts for a relationship, mm-hmm. it's something initiated initiated by the wife, the the, the female of the relationship. How do you suggest, like, if you get someone who reaches out to you and you happen to have a spot where you're taking new clients, and she says, you know, I want to, but my husband's on the fence. How do you? How do you recommend she, or even vice versa, if it's a man who, you know, they get to a place and he's like, we need, we need some, a third party. Mm -hmm. How do you recommend they get their partner to be willing to come in? So this is where, um, I often tell people, so when I first start, um, in any client, um, I always tell them that, you know, number one, I'm an asshole. Um, I curse in session, um, and that I get fired every day. And I'm totally okay with that. I'm totally okay with you firing me, right? So this is going to be the point where you fired me with this question. Um, because it's not your job to get them in. You know, and and that's what I tell the woman or the man when they call in. Like, well, he don't want to come. How about you come? 
okay. and let's talk to you, you know, because you can't control him. You can only control yourself. And if you start working on you, maybe he'll then want to come in or maybe she'll then want to come in and do the work on themselves too. You know, um, you can come in and we can talk about communication and ways to communicate with your partner. So they possibly hear you, you know, are you parenting them, you know, and so do they feel like they're in a parenting relationship where it's like, you need to go to therapy he's not going to respond to that. Mm -hmm. So what is a better way that you can say that? Or how can you better show up as a wife so that he says, well, Hey, I want to go and talk about these things too. Um, there are many times that I start off with one partner and I often ask them, Hey, bring your partner in, tell them I would love to hear about them. And even when the partner comes in, I'm just like, I always play it up. She talked so amazing about you. And I've heard so many things about you. And I just wanted the chance to meet you and talk about ways that we can better support you. Not necessarily all the bad things you're doing. Cause she told me all of them, yeah. but not all those, those things, but She's been dealing with some stuff and we want to talk about some ways that you can better support her and maybe ways that you guys can better communicate. Um, and so I'm just glad you came in. Um, but the first thing, and I tell people this all the time, if your partner does not want to go to therapy, come by yourself because I'm sure there are some things that you can work on because none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, and I guess it's kind of like, it's kind of like playing a game of chicken, right? Like if say in Jessica's example, the woman goes mm -hmm. and the dude's not interested, but she goes like one, mm -hmm. two, three sessions. And like, and he's like, what are you doing? What are yeah. y'all talking about? You so, know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. That's pretty cool. It's, it's a good way to, that's, that's good advice. I, I would think, cause I think most people would be scared to do that if they're in a partnership or in a relationship to go to therapy by themselves. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I can see how that could work. Mm -hmm. Did you have another question? I do, but I want to, because I, th I think we usually tend to wait till the end of an episode where it's like, okay, you've got 30 seconds. Is there anything we didn't cover that you want yeah, to? Yeah, but I have, I have one burning question before you do that. So then why did you just ask your Because question? I wanted to be polite, and but I didn't expect you to say yes because you just asked like three questions in a row. Y'all ask your question. So, I love it. I love um, it. Ask your question. I love it. Because I had asked a question, so you, so you could have asked the next question. You didn't have to be like, you got another question. You want to let me go? No, I'm gonna interrupt you the way you okay. interrupted me. In you know, two I got, minutes. I got, I got the board in front of me, so I can I'll mute you. I'll come over to your mic. No, you're not. You're not gonna move. You said you stuck because you crossed your legs. <laughs> I love it. Ask your question. I yeah. love it. It better be good. You still, too. Look, you still look good though. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't She's try still and butter radiating. Me out. She's still radiating. She's still radiating. So you mentioned uh, church, or maybe you mentioned church. Um, as a licensed therapist, mm -hmm. oh, I think that was one of my books. How do you questions. feel about people? going to pastors and, you know, first ladies who may not necessarily, who may be, you know, obviously uh, ordained, uh, mm -hmm. but not necessarily licensed in therapy of, of any kind mm -hmm. for counseling. Mm -hmm. um, do you, ha, what's your opinion on that? Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel like people, they're like, people are doing a disservice to themselves um, because it's obviously more comfortable. You know, you're, most people are, are in, the, in the pulpit or in the pew. No, I'm just I'm, I'm just curious because I got you. that's one thing I've always thought about. Like a lot of people who are who are church going, mm -hmm. they tend to go to their pastor for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and and while I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, um, I do think there are certain uh, topics, certain uh, battles one may have where it's it's best to go to someone who's actually licensed in it. Mm -hmm. So um, how do how do you what's your opinion on that? And how, as as a therapist. So my opinion in general is I love the churches that have licensed therapists. Okay. Wait, churches do that? Yep. So my church in Atlanta has licensed therapists. You go to one of the new age churches. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they have licensed therapists. There are churches here in Charlotte. So they have licensed therapists on staff. Really? Um, I, my pastor, I mean, love him to death. Um, he understands the power of mental health. He's mm -hmm. in Greensboro, understands the power of mental health and connecting you with, you know, therapists. I think so for me, I know what's in my wheelhouse, you yeah. know, and when something is outside of my wheelhouse, I'm like, hey, let me connect you with this or that because that's outside of my wheelhouse. Um I think that's important. You know, I love the new little cliches. You can have Jesus and a therapist too. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should be on that mantra. There is, there's a reason why Stephanie is dot, 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 
so many dots in debt right now, <laughs> you know, for the schooling, for the yeah. licensing. It's just like you going to school, David. You guys are amazing and you guys are so intelligent and smart in your professions. I would not dare come and sit at your desk and try to do your job. I don't know what the hell that is or how to do that. There are so many people that come and try to sit in our seats and they don't yeah. know the back. You know, we we all feel like we can give advice. Mm -hmm. If you really knew a good therapist, the one thing that they don't do is give advice. I know. Mm. They mm. just listen. They listen. They tell you another way of thinking about it. They ask you another perspective. Damn. Did you think about but they don't give you advice. They don't say, I think you should go do this. Yeah. I think you should I think you should leave, huh? Oh and, and, and and it's little things like that that you learn. And so you learn those things. You learn how to look at yourself and say, am I judging Jess because of this decision she made? Because that's something that I don't necessarily agree with. It's not me. It's not about me. It's about you. And it's things like that that you start to learn. And I just think that we should all stay in our wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. So piggybacking off of his question. Oh, see, I set you, you up. I threw the oop. It was in one of my bullet points. You were on. I already had it in my head. Okay. You just asked it first. Anywho, uh, as a Christian, mm -hmm. um, who? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry. My bad. What do you mean by who? <laughs> Ooh, you wait till we get off this podcast. You're not gonna have your mama thinking different about me. Oh uh, no, I was, I was, I was messing with her. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, it, you better be amongst <laughs> who amongst us. You. Um, as a Christian, as a therapist, do you ever, how do I ask this question? What is the line? Cause, and, and you've kind of touched on it, but what's the line? Why is there two? I, I have no, I, it was just here. I, don't know, it was it's one of the I moved it out the way when I was laying down. I think it's one of the small children. Okay. It's probably the smallest one. Mm -hmm. Everywhere how? is everywhere, but the bathroom. <laughs> like we find toothbrushes in the kitchen and in, in closets, in every like everywhere except where it's supposed house. to be. It's okay. ridiculous. Um, how do you do you turn off Christian like if you have a secular client mm -hmm. do you turn off Christian Stephanie if you have a Christian client do you turn on how do you know that balance how do you know when to because obviously you're probably hearing things you're probably experienced things you're mm -hmm. probably hearing some stories like whoo child like that's mm -hmm. that's a lot how do you and maybe it doesn't even have to include Christian being a Christian mm -hmm. at all. How do you separate your personal? Because, you know, a lot of us will quickly be like, oh, I don't judge. Mm -hmm. You know, do you live your life? Turn up. You know, if you if you get your sugar dad, all this stuff. Like I've had situations where I've even been like, like a friend will tell me something. And I'm like, OK, this is me not judging. Mm -hmm. like you, you, you live your life. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a professional. Mm hmm. How do you balance that where it's like, I feel like if I were a therapist, someone would say something to me and, and my face always tells you what I'm thinking. So, you know, they might be like, you know, my husband does this and this and this. And, you know, sometimes I don't want him to stick it there, poke it there, pop it. And I would be like, y'all doing a lot. How do you not make people uncomfortable so the first the first question how do i turn it on and off even with christianity and i do want to answer that i don't i'm stephanie mm -hmm. and i i have to be true to myself and who i am i got i love god like that's just who i am mm -hmm. um but my god has nothing to do with your life you know and so i i, I sit in that place and god taught us all to love you yeah. know and no one is perfect and the biggest one that i walk in my office with every single day is no sin is greater than the other mm. you know and i go into mm. you know we go to church and we praising the god but guess mm. what we going out there we going to eat that fried chicken mm -hmm. and kfc and the buffet and all that kind of stuff and that's gluttony and that's just as the biggest yep. sin as somebody busting it down on saturday night so who am i to judge on that right so that's that's me that that's just how i deal in that um, the other piece goes back to that training piece. There are so many classes that we have on facial expressions and Please. yes, and shock value. And when you're dealing with people with different diagnoses, they are coming in there for the shock value. They've had nobody to talk to for, especially right now in COVID. I ain't had nobody to talk to in the last 24 months. <laughs> I need to get all this shit out. Right. Yeah. And so they just coming in and saying stuff and you, you take it and you listen and it's not up for me to judge you that that's your life. Once again, I can give you a different perspective. I can ask you some questions around it. 
but but that's you um as we as we're talking about kind of shock value um one i'll give you one example i'm sorry one example i think that was the most this is when i really knew that i had mastered it i had a client that um was the mom was not racist and this is how she walked in my office i'm not racist okay so okay. you racist nope I'm not racist, <laughs> but, but my my child wants to date outside of the race. And the child tried to commit suicide because mm. the a mom would not let this child date outside of the race. I'm not racist. And what's all the thoughts that go through your head at something like that? Like, yeah. what do you mean? And in that moment, have you ever had those epiphanies like where it truly does not bother your spirit? You're really like, I get it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you have rules for your home. You have rules for your home. And one of the rules of your home is in this home, we don't date outside of our race. When you're outside of my home, you can do what you want. But one of the rules inside of my home is that I don't date outside of my race that's just i mean that's a big judgment y'all mm -hmm. it's a big place for me to step up and be like no nah, girl but i don't have a space there that is the rules of your home and the same way that i would respect the rules of my mom's home when she's saying we're gonna do this okay mom this your house this i'm gonna respect that i have to respect the rules of your house that's that's powerful because mm -hmm. i'd be like so you're racist yeah <laughs> no but you know when you saying that, and one reason why I really appreciate therapists, want, there's there's a scripture in the Bible. Don't ask me where. I know it's in there. Mm -hmm. I can't give you the receipt, mm -hmm. um, but I can GPS it for you. Okay. Uh, and all you're getting, get understanding. Mm -hmm. And I feel that therapists have mm -hmm. such a unique and beautiful understanding mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. and just recognizing What's your background? Mm -hmm. How did you grow up? Mm -hmm. Where Where are you from? You know, mm -hmm. regionally in the country. Mm -hmm. What w Just what's your overall life experience? Mm -hmm. Like it's when it comes to just the regular human being. Yeah, yeah, we might be people, people where we can engage with people, but we don't. It takes so much more understanding to pause and kind of go through that list of. I don't know what their trauma is. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their what what they've been through. What mm -hmm. they're going through. So I can't judge or make assumptions mm -hmm. on who they are right now. And I think that's why I have such a love and appreciation for therapists. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've been, I've been going to therapy since I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like I have decent self-awareness, but like I just kind of got to a point. I just been through some things and I was like, look, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. This whole go to jesus was not working so mm -hmm. let me just go to somebody mm -hmm. else um and since then i feel like i i can recognize when i'm like i'm getting to a bad place i need to go talk to mm -hmm. someone and even before he knows it, i'm just i've already like set mm -hmm. up appointments and i wish more people would would be comfortable with that so i guess my, my question for you with all of that mm -hmm. is what is the goal of therapy what mm -hmm. is there ever a point where people who go to therapy have accomplished have gained the enlightenment everything the knowledge that they need to not need to go or is therapy just one of those things that need to be offered like from youth like i've to my knowledge our kids aren't traumatized mm -hmm. but you know me not getting her an lol surprise doll might be trauma mm -hmm. i thought you know she's five maybe we should like take her to a child mm -hmm. therapist just to talk mm -hmm. just to you know not coming to us but just to have someone to talk to so and i know I've, i feel i'm gonna stop talking because i feel like i keep adding to my question mm -hmm. so um you remember we were talking about my trauma you remember we were talking You're about my, my car yes um we have to take it in and get a tune-up when do i stop taking it in and get a tune-up you don't have a car no more <laughs> because why yeah. you're always gonna it's yeah. always being used so it's always gonna your emotions um, your brain your body Shea. is always being used. It always needs well, to was, up. That was a very, that was like yeah. picture perfect. I was how to, to answer a question like a, with a question. Mm -hmm. I was like, just swap out your lease. Just get yeah. a lease. Just spent, like, just spent like 
eight minutes <laughs> getting from point A to point B of her question, and you literally answered it in like, in like 15 so seconds. I have, a, like, I have a long list of You know what? At like, like, minute, at like minute two, Steph already knew the question that you were going to ask, and she, had, she was because sitting she there has, with the answer. She has therapeutic She was sitting there. She was just sitting there like, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm. She already knew what she was gonna say. Therapy is a is a form of a tune up. It's the form of an oil change. Couples therapy, individual therapy. We all need our checkups. Mm-hmm. Your your doctor recommends that you come in once a year to get your blood work done yep. to get a checkup. It's the same thing with therapy. Get a checkup. We do not have all the right answers. We don't know everything. Come get a checkup. Outstanding. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we could keep going. We could. I imagine we'll keep going after we cut the cameras off. But um, just, just I, I think this is a good place to stop. So I know you say you're not taking no more clients. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you want people to be able to find you. I don't know if you're on social media. I don't know if you're one of those therapists who drop like little nuggets here and there or whatever. So if, if there's any of um, your handles or websites or whatever uh, that you want to share, I'll just kind of yeah. give you the floor to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I um, definitely love connecting with people. Just if you have questions, if you just having a bad day, and you're like, Steph, um, is there anyone you could send me to? And I will be accepting more clients come November. We should be opening up a little bit more. Um, but the dope sex therapist um, on IG, please follow me. Please connect. Please send me any questions. Um, uh, what's the website? Intimacy Center of Georgia. So we are in Georgia um, and we are in Douglasville, um, but we are still fully telehealth. Um, okay. We also offer uh, coaching. So um, if you needed some of those coaching services and you're someplace else, that can be telehealth at all as as well. Um, but just hit me up. I would just I just love to connect. I love now. It's gonna take me forever to answer you back. Trust <laughs> me, because um, I got some wild ass kids um, and I can't get to my Instagram till like one o'clock in the morning. Um, but yeah. you know, please, 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 the dope sex therapist. I would love to meet you. I would love to say hi. Awesome. So I'm going to sneak in one last question. Mm-hmm. If there's one thing about sex you want people to know, maybe like a a, a, a falsehood that people believe or, or, or a misrepresentation or a bad stereotype or whatever, mm-hmm. what would it be? Or what is it? The bedroom is undefiled. It's undefined. No one is in that bedroom. That's in the Bible somewhere, mm-hmm. too. We just got to find it. We don't have a receipt <laughs> on it. Um, but no one is in that bedroom but you. And so what you do in that bedroom is between you and your partner. And that's important. Um, I think a lot of times generalizing for women, um, we feel too freaky. Or we feel too, uh, he's not going to like this. Oh, he's going to say this. Or I think he wants that. I think he wants to see that person. Let it go. Try it out. Do it. Go ahead. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not going to ask a question, but... I think it's important to also give you a few, like I was trying to say mm-hmm. earlier, and then you were like, I got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, usually we wait till like the last like 30 seconds. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, you got this amount of time. What didn't we cover that you want people to know that you feel is important? So and you got like three minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Sorry. Culture. I think that we as African Americans have been taught that sex is bad mm-hmm. and it's taboo. And I think that sex is something that God put here for us on earth to enjoy. Um, And I think we should enjoy it. Um, I think that we have been taught don't have sex, don't have sex, don't have sex. Mm -hmm. And you get married and it's sex, 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 sex. And there's no damn balance. And it's like, so Mm -hmm. how do we get to that? Um, So to enjoy it. Um, I think that Becky could suck dick on the bus and she wasn't called a hoe. But if Tasha did, Tasha was a hoe at 16. Um, And so there's a lot of cultural things that I think we still hold on to. Um, And I would just challenge people to let those things go. Yeah. You know, to really just try and to be open to whatever that looks like. And I always leave with from 9 to 930, what you do inside of your bedroom is your business. Mm-hmm. Your mama, daddy, sister, and brother and them don't got to know. It is your business. So enjoy it. Thank you. Unless you end up pregnant, then everybody knows okay. you've had sex. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Which mm-hmm. is kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. That was, that was a beautiful conclusion. Yeah. That was so, a um, very, very appropriate Instagram handle, I believe, because my cousin is very dope. She is dope. Oh, thank and you is, again. Is, is so electrifying. And, um, yeah, I, I hate that it took us this long to get her on. Like, we, we, we were being real lazy for like, 
20 episodes <laughs> <laughs> with getting guests on and we kind of knew uh all along that we wanted to have you on but now we're kind of like getting toward the the tail end of our season one yeah. uh, we're gonna take a break when the baby gets here so it was like all right who can we get um and then i saw when i hit you up i saw that you were in town the weekend before i was like damn Jess, that would have been a perfect we were, mm-hmm. we were talking about it would have been a perfect time to get steph on so it was perfect that you were already going to be back up this way. So thank you for blessing us. Thank you. Thank for you for, for blessing uh, the Vibe Tribe, our loyal yeah. uh, viewers and listeners out there. Um, and and we, we had our friend Jacinthia on earlier on in season one. And she kind of spoke to some of the some similar things. Um, she's not a sex therapist by any means, but she's still um, pretty, pretty knowledgeable, I would say, on, on the topic. And just that, like you said, like people think sex is taboo and it's not. Like God put it here. For, like yeah. it's like. Like Smokey said, like it's, I put it here for you and me from the earth. From the earth, yes. yeah, for us to enjoy. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> I hope I, I hope anybody who watches this got uh, plenty of nuggets. Um, and and please do reach out to yes. Stephanie um, if 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 you have any questions at all. I'm pretty sure she can get you right or yeah. point you in the right direction. So my question. Oh damn. <laughs> Damn. I know. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead and uh, connect with us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Rush Vibes. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and, and hit the like button and go ahead and subscribe as well. Um, again, we will be taking a break here pretty soon, but I think we have at least three or four more guests coming up before me and Jessica have our uh, our final, I guess you could call it, our season finale. Um, where we, I don't know, did we decide what we were going to talk about? Is it like our... Our story, I guess. I don't know if we can do that in an hour. I really want to do an episode where we recap our guest. Um, we've had an educator. Oops. We've had a life coach. And now we've had a sex therapist. And we'll have a politician on And a soon. politician. Uh, so I really soon. want to do an episode where we just kind of talk about mm-hmm. the takeaways from... Mm-hmm. Like, for me, the big takeaway is just the normalcy of the conversation of sex where, you know, even just saying the word sex is uncomfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. Like I'm getting comfortable. Like even when just talking yeah. about organs, like mm-hmm. it's like, you know, wee wee. And, and it's, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. Oh, yeah. that even with children. Yeah. yeah. Like the normalcy of saying sex with kids, like, oh, like mind penis, blow, blow. vagina. But like we have to, we, we have to, they, they took sex ed out of classes. So, we have to be the sex educators oh, for wow. our children. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'd, I'd love to have like just yeah. a you and I recapping just like oh, I guess each, we, I guess each we can segment that. that what we take away from each person we've spoken to. Because sure. I feel like I've gotten even just from this conversation. Yeah. And, and and we'll run your episode. We'll have one in between when we're recording this and when we actually run yours. But we had Leah, a friend of um, just a mutual friend. Um, and she's a life coach mm-hmm. and she was disruptive life disruptive oh, like wow. she was whew, she was she was and we didn't she was even fire. get to, just like with you we didn't so, even get to yeah. get mm-hmm. yeah so I, I think light, that that's layer. yeah that's a good idea so yeah we're gonna go ahead and wrap up so episodes every wednesday in the morning um hopefully <laughs> if i if i get it cut and, and put out in time he so will. let me go ahead and uh get the music going do you want to take us out this time? Or are you more prepared? No, you, he keeps asking you to take us out. And because I'm like, I take us out every I never episode. Take us out. You can't just be like, take us out. I take us out every episode. No, you, uh, bye. Mm-hmm. All right. So y'all that's, be good. Be safe. If you haven't got your vaccines and you're you're not um, against them, go ahead and get them. Be safe. Wear your mask. Wash your Wear your mask. Protect the kids. Or stay home. All right. We out. Love y'all. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I don't care. Way too far. Stop me now. Ah. Uh-huh.